Let's move on to an important phenomenon in farms, which is cavitation control. Now, although the case that we are going to look at is a water jet with a fairly high specific speed and a four loaded impeller, cavitation is obviously a major issue in the design of pumps across uh, all specific speeds and applications. And in uh, many cases, it's necessary to uh, achieve good cavitation performance while maintaining uh, similar levels of pump performance. And so you can find detailed information on this work in this paper, which was published in the Journal of Fluids Engineering. So, so basically this was a fairly high specific speed mixed flow stage and uh, the specific speed was 946 in terms of RPM meters and meter cube per minute. And there were six impeller blades and 11 diffuser blades. And in fact, the baseline stage actually had quite a high efficiency already. And so the purpose of this redesign really was to try and see if we could improve cavitation performance without any significant change in efficiency. And so in many cases, as you know, sometimes what's good for cavitation is not good for efficiency of the stage. And so the main aim of this work was to uh, try and find out what's the optimum loading that can improve cavitation performance while maintaining a very good efficiency at the same time. So, so in fact, what they did was a sort of a parametric study so the baseline impeller was four loaded and then what you can see here is they looked at a mid loaded distribution and an aft loaded distribution in the, in the design of the impeller so design ld1 was mid loaded and design ld2 was aft loaded and then stage cfd was run on these and then you can actually see here the net effect of creating the, the geometry with those loadings and then looking at the surface pressure from cfd so the baseline is shown in black circles, LD1 is shown with open diamonds, and LD2 is shown with open triangles. And what you can see here clearly is the effect of this loading changes at the hub, midspan, and the shroud. And if you look at the static pressure on the suction surface, you can, you can clearly see here that in the baseline case, we actually have this dip in pressure that is actually causing the cavitation problem. And this is happening near the shroud. And what you see is that as we go to mid-loaded or aft-loaded distributions, this dip is reduced. And so you should be getting some improvements in cavitation performance. Now, although this is single-phase CFD, but what drives cavitation at the end is these uh, pressure gradients. But when you look at the performance, um, on the left side, I'm showing the stage efficiency. And you can see that as we go to uh, mid-loaded and aft-loaded, the efficiency does drop quite significantly and uh, you can in fact get a one point drop in the stage efficiency as a result of changes in these loading distributions. But we can also estimate NPSHR through single phase CFD based on power drop. And then when, what you can see is that as we go towards mid loaded and aft loaded, we, we, get, we first get slight improvements and then we actually get bigger improvements in the NPSHR. And uh, that's kind of expected because we saw how the surface pressure was changing as we changed the blade loading. Uh, but, but the big problem here is that we are, we are getting this significant efficiency drop. So in fact, what they then did was they came up with this type of loading distribution. And, and what's very interesting here is that at the hub and the mid span, they, they are using this four loaded distribution. But at the shroud, they're actually unloading the first 10%. And they have an almost four loaded distribution after that. And then the effect of this type of loading distribution is on the surface static pressure that you see here. And you, you can see the, both the baseline and the final design here. And you can see as a result of changing the loading, you could actually remove this dip here that goes below the vapor pressure, causing the cavitation problem on the shroud. And in fact, we tend to stay above the vapor pressure all along, at least for the design inlet pressure, that is. So, so, and also the foreloading at the hub and mid span is actually quite important for this mixed flow impeller because in this way you diffuse the flow very rapidly and uh, this then ensures quite low profile losses and uh, relatively high efficiency. So, so you can then see the results of the single phase CFD analysis here. And what you can see here is we are clearly getting a, um, just a small drop in the efficiency and it's actually less than half a percent at this design flow rate. Uh, and in fact, we are seeing a very good improvement in the NPSHR.
And then they, they verified this by using a multi-phase cavitation analysis. And what you can see here is contours of mass fraction of the vapor, vapor phase. So blue actually means it's all liquid. Any green or red means cavitation. And then as you can see, the conventional or the baseline impeller was cavitating at the uh, inlet design pressure in these regions. But this new design was not cavitating at all at the inlet design pressure. And then at 60% of the inlet design pressure, the cavitation is now expanded in the baseline design, while in the final design, they got much improvement in the cavitating region. And in fact, they had access to a cavitation tunnel so they could verify their cavitation analysis. And you can see that there is a very good correspondence between these regions of cavitation predicted by the multi-phase CFD, where it could actually pick up these uh, regions of cavitation in the, in the experiments. And there is also a good agreement even for the tip clearance induced cavitation between the CFD and the test data.